Ladies and gentlemen, today is September 11th, 2013, and this is the Kane Kale Daily Show. I'm your host, Kane Lafferty, and today is day 91. Today we're just going to be doing whatever Wednesday, and we're going to be jumping back into the metal slug piece that we were working on yesterday while I was teaching you guys perspective. So let's go ahead and jump into that, shall we? All righty then. So one thing that I decided that I was going to do, many people have been asking that I show my references, and I've been kind of uh, a little bit hesitant to, to bring them in because I want to make sure it's not like copyright infringement, but as long as I'm not like just like saying, hey, look at this amazing picture I drew, and I just ripped it off Google, I think we'll be just fine. So let's go ahead and jump into this, and I want to talk to you guys a little bit about some of my philosophies that go into drawing regarding flow as well as capturing capturing character and like the original vision right so let's go ahead and get into that so as you know uh, let's go ahead and just pull out really quick and just show you the full drawing here uh, we're working on Theo from Metal Slug for those of you who don't know what that is it's an amazing 2D fighting game or not fighting game 2D side-scrolling shooter shoot 'em up game shmup if you want to call it that and uh, yeah we're just working on that today so uh, I had a sketch that I had laid down yesterday and today what I'm going to be showing you guys is how I go about just kind of cleaning the lines. Cleaning the lines is basically what we're doing today. And the first thing that you want to do is make sure you're on the right layer. That's always good. Let's try that again. Let's try that again. Alright, so here we go. So now we're on the right layer. And you'll notice one of the things that I like to do lately is I really like to work with this chalk brush and the reason why I like this chalk brush is because it just gives it has a really nice texture to it like if you just lay it down like that see all those little little imperfections kind of grainy little things that go in there with it I really like that and I think it really lends itself to a sketchy type of style and sometimes it allows you to kind of pick up little I don't know just like little characteristics in a sketch that you wouldn't normally get with say a hard round brush like this right like this thing you can only get so much character out of that it's just the opacity and the shape but with the chalk brush it has a lot of really cool things and um, I used to kinda of shy away from it because it's kinda of like this weird oblong shape but um, I was at a workshop where I was watching the amazing Jason Chan work on something and he sketches with a chalk like brush so I was really excited to uh, try that out for myself because hey if Jason Chan does it then it's good enough for me so yeah basically what I'm doing here is you'll see that I'm working really with just like simplified shapes and this is kind of like what I like to do with my style right this is something that I really like to do with the style now I don't draw a lot of musculature I really like to simplify things almost to like a cartoony a cartoony feel but in some ways there's still uh, some of that detail in it if that makes sense you can tell that the knowledge of the musculature is there but I kinda just take it away I simplify it from that point point. and this is something that I kinda wanted to talk to you guys about because some people talk about oh well if I learn a simplified style do I need to learn about anatomy do I need to study anatomy and all that stuff and my answer to that is yes it actually will help you out a lot if not if it's not man mandatory it's just gonna help you out a lot and you might as well do it because what's really nice is when you have a concept of what's actually happening what's really happening within the body and again I'm not 100 percent perfect but uh, once you know like a couple of the little subtleties and just like what makes um, you know kinda like what makes the the back kinda curve like this and you know, just like all, the, all those little things, right? Then you can take your knowledge from the complicated and you can simplify it down. And you can leave just enough information there so that way it still looks nice, if that makes sense. So that's basically what I'm doing here. And another thing that I really noticed that I like to do, and this comes from the sketch cards that I was doing at Comic Con, I noticed that I kind of, I, I've learned to like trust in my instincts even more when I work in physical media. Because unlike unlike digital, there's no going back, right? There's no going back at once you lay that line down. So it's really good to just it's kind of cool to to just work like that and know that your lines that go down will be there forever. 
you know, especially once you go to the pen. Pencil, it's okay, but you know what I'm saying. So I'm just going ahead, I'm, I'm going ahead and I'm kind of referencing what's going on over here, right? I'm kind of drawing this jacket down in such a way that it looks pleasing to the eye. And again, I'm just simplifying things. Simplifying things, making it look simple, all that good stuff. Making it look easy on the eyes. But again, just little, little details make a big difference. I believe. I believe! Yeah, I like that a lot. I like it very much. Alright, so let's go ahead and bring this up. And let's not forget this collar. I love how the Metal Slug characters have these cool collars that kind of pop up like this. Looks really cool. It looks nice. And I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this. This is something that I tell people to do. You can just choose your layer over here, and then you can hit Control J, and it will automatically just duplicate it up. And I really like to do this whenever I'm going to be making major changes to something, or like doing a big addition. Because sometimes there might be something in the original sketch that I'll lose once I go into the refinement stage, right? And in case I want to go back, that makes it really, really easy. So again, what I'm doing here is notice I'm getting rid of this line right here because this shirt is not vacuum sealed to her chest and we don't draw girls like that, okay? We know that the laws of gravity are in play here, so we're going to go ahead and make sure that that shirt acts accordingly. There we go, we can add a little bit of shadow there and that, that will obviously get the point across. I'll just do one of those. Lovely! Lovely! Simple is almost always better, from what I've come to understand. At least when I'm working in this style. I really like to just simplify things to all just what they need to be, right? So let's go ahead and drop this down. She's looking a little bit anorexic here. Let's give her a little bit more width on her hips. There we go. Much better. Much better. And there we go. I always like Fio's belly shirt. Usually I'm not a fan of belly shirts at all. But on Fio, she just pulls it off. I don't know how she does it. I don't know how she does it. It might be the gun. It's probably just because she's got the gun and the glasses and the cool hat. That's what it takes. You can't have just the belly shirt. you got to have glasses and the hat. And the ponytail. <laughs> and you got to shoot zombies. So yeah, let me make sure everything is going well over here with you guys. How are you doing over here in the chat? Or I should say over here in the chat, but I can't see it if I look that way. This is for dramatic effect. All right, uh, someone's asking, what Photoshop am I using? I'm using Photoshop CS3 because I got it legally from the company I used to work for. And I'm too cheap to upgrade. So yeah, CS3. And it works just fine. Works just fine. Alrighty then. <laughs> oh, uh, Revy is asking, do I have a trick to making making good inking once the line art is all good? Um, I do. I do have a. I have a couple tricks, and that varies depending on what I'm working on. If I'm working on the comic, I'll actually take it to this point, and then I'll actually just reduce the opacity and I'll go in for a final line art layer. However, when I'm working on my own stuff, usually I kind of like to go in and paint it anyway, so having a bit more of a rougher edge kind of lends well to the final product, so I won't go in and do like a third layer. And I really hate line art, so if there's any way that I can avoid it, and you guys know this, <laughs> any way I can avoid it, I do at all costs. I just say it's my style, right? It's my style to be messy. It's my style to not have clean line art. The only reason I do it in the comic is because I want it to look authentic. And it is important to be clean, right? It's important to be clean in that scenario. But to be honest, it's really not that fun. Not fun to do line art. Which is why I have amazing people to help me out. Thank you to those amazing people. All right, so, um, but you know what's interesting is the, for those of you who checked out the bonus content for issue two with the football game, you know, the, well, for those of you who saw it, um, I actually tried out a different line art style with that. And it was basically like this, where I drew the characters, and then I just went back in and refined everything. 
And I thought it was going to actually save a lot of time, but I don't think it did. If anything, it felt like it took more time, which is kind of a weird thing. It was actually very surprising to me to find that out, that it actually took just as much time, or it felt like it took just as much time, if not more time. So, okay, um, I'm really liking this. And we can go ahead and just compare to what it was originally. See? It's a very oh, it's a very slow process. Probably not very fun to watch. But, um, like I said, it's whatever Wednesday and we do whatever we want. Let's go ahead and zoom in on the face and let's take care of uh, Theo's face. Theo's face. Let's go ahead and do that. <laughs> People are saying Inkscape helps with inking. Paint tool sigh, they say is great for line art. I'll have to try those things out sometime. Alright, you know what? I wish I would have made this such low resolution. What are we running at here? 5 by 7, 300. Let's go bigger. Let's go 400. Make it bigger! Oops! Wrong screen. God, I still have that set up in a hotkey. <laughs> All right. Okay, that's more like it. That's more like it. Save it out, and let's go ahead and take care of this face. And I can already feel my head heating up from the heat in this room. So, beanie's coming off. Ooh, yeah. Mm. All right. Let's go ahead and focus in on this face. So what do we want to do here? I can already see some really cool hairlines coming in down here. So I'm going to go ahead and bring those out. So those look really nice. Um, let's see, that's her ear. Okay, that's good. Very good. Now, her hair would actually be going over her eyeglasses. Because having glasses, I know that, that is not very comfortable to place your glasses over your hair. It goes underneath it. If you have longer hair like that. Ah, how authentic! How authentic! Let's go ahead and draw this back. Hairline back. And her neck is going to be coming up just like that. And my dog approves of that. Um, alright, hat time! Alright, Theo, let's take your hat and make it look cool. So because we are looking up at her, most of the hair is going to be overlapping at this point. So we're going to get something like this. Again, I'm really trying to preserve this shape in here. Right? In fact, this is a point where I like to duplicate up. Right? Let's duplicate our layer. That way we can always go back. If there's something that we do in this one that just does not capture the original vision of the old one. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I like how the glasses come down. Let's bring them up like that. Let's bring the hair out like that. That looks good. So let's keep this underside kind of like in shadow. Like that. Lovely. Lovely. That looks lovely. Hey, hey. Hey there. Now that's some good looking hair. Good looking. Okay, uh, let's take the brim of the hat. Take care of that. Looking good. Looking good. Ooh, ooh. But I really like working like this. It's really fun. I see it really as digital painting for me has become sculpting. Sculpting of the lines, sculpting of sketches. And it's much different than what I was doing a few episodes ago when I was working with physical media, right? Doing pencil and having to go straight to line and pen. And it's really interesting how I thought that I was going to have a lot of trouble. In fact, well, here's the thing, is I did have a little bit of trouble. 
going straight from digital back to physical media and you know no undo button no you know scrubbing the history it's like once it's down especially once you're inking it it's done you know there's no going back prisma color marker color once it's down it's done you don't bring it back so i think it's kind of cool to go from that to back to digital and kind of have it affect me a little bit right i kind of like the idea of just committing to things just committing to things don't don't rely on the undo button necessarily as a crutch. You know, use it, but don't don't rely on it. And almost just trust in your instinct a little bit more. And I like that. I definitely like that. All right. So it's looking good. Let's go ahead and flip the canvas and let's check out our character from the other side. Make sure it's looking good. I really like that a lot. Let me get rid of some of these old ones. These old drawings. I don't think I need these. Uh, actually, that's fine. It's not lagging the computer too bad, so we'll just keep it. Keeping it! Alright, so we need to bring this back. Bring this hat back like this. This hat is actually going to come down right to that point. Good! Good! And the reason why I flip the canvas and work like this is because once you get fresh eyes on it, like flipping the canvas makes your eyes have to readjust to the picture that you're creating. And it allows you to see all the little mistakes and imperfections that you may have otherwise not noticed. So I implore you, try it out for yourself. Try it out for yourself. See where it takes you. See what magical places it takes you. Okay. Um, this hairline needs to come back a little bit more like that. So it looks a little bit weird. Weird. Okay. Good. Good. And let's get that ponytail in there. I really like the shape of this ponytail. It just looks really awesome. So I'm going to really try to preserve that. Preserve that ponytail. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. See, it's just sculpting, shaving away the excess lines, the excess lineage that you do not want to see. I think it's really, really fun to do it like this. It's very methodical. And once you get to a certain point, it just, it's almost like you can just go on autopilot anyway and just like let the drawing take care of itself. That's kind of a fun thing to do. I like getting things to a point where I get to relax, you know what I mean? Because drawing is supposed to be, I really believe that no matter what stage of drawing you're in, you're supposed to be in a relaxed state because that's when your best quality of things come out. That's when your best quality of work will come out. Because when you're not stressing over it, you're just letting it flow, you're having fun with it, and you're allowing yourself to be creative. So if you guys ever feel stressed out when you're working on a project or you're just getting frustrated over something, you know, you can't get this guy's hand to look right or whatever, I would suggest that you simply take a break and then come back to it when you're ready to be a little bit more adult about it, okay? Take some time, just relax, and then come back when um, you feel better. And really, the point of it is, is that if you're going to do it bad the first time, just do it bad and then get better from there. But don't allow the fear of doing bad to stop you from even trying. Okay? Otherwise, it will find you. It will find you if that happens to you. And I will not be happy with you. Okay. Um, let's see here. What is happening right here? Let me flip the canvas and see if I can figure it out. I don't know what that is supposed to be. Oh, that's the back of her hair. Ha! <laughs> Lovely. That's yeah, her hair. Okay, cool. Mystery has been solved. Okay. And let's go ahead and get this. You know, I just noticed, even though this is like a caricature version of her, the facial features are actually placed in a very similar place. I really like that. 
That was kind of an accident. But, uh, it works. <laughs> Alright, so let's go ahead and uh, move this mouth around. <laughs> let's move this mouth. Let's move this mouth. Uh, let's see if we want to put it anywhere else. Okay, uh, I think it looks good there. Um, I kind of like it where it was. It looks, it looks good. It's getting hot in here. <laughs> People are like, calm down. <laughs> calm down, Ken. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So, hmm. I'm not completely happy with this mouth. I do kind of want to move it up just a tad bit. Just a little bit. Okay, that's good. That's good. I don't know if that's even the mouth that I want. Duplicating. Duplicating, and let's experiment with some mouths. That one does look okay. But I think we could get one that has a little bit more, uh, a little bit more attitude in it, right? No. Oh, that's kind of nice. Uh, Oh, ooh, I like that right there. That's it. That's it right there. How's that different from the other one? Okay. Yeah, I like that a little bit more of a smirk going on there. It looks nice. All right. All right, guys. So that is rounding out our head there. It's looking good. I'm liking the way that looks. Looks cool. Yeah, it does look a little close to the nose. It does look a little close to the nose. Let's move it down just a tad. So I like how it is close to the nose, but maybe not that close. That's too close. A little too close. Okay. No, I don't like how the nose looks like it's just like it's too small. It looks like it needs to stick out a little bit further. I don't know, maybe I'm just being too picky. Mm. Yeah, this is a good example of why we save the older versions, because I don't like this anymore. Don't like it. We're going back to the old one. Because that one just does it right. And this is what I'm talking about, guys, like the subtleties. This is where it's really, really important, especially in the face. Subtleties with the mouth, subtleties with the eyes, there's a whole bunch of things that go into giving the character the expression that you want. And it's very important that you understand how careful you must be. How careful. It is a delicate dance. A delicate dance. Alright, but we'll come back to that in a little bit because I like the way that that looks. And let's go ahead and move on to the rest of the body. I think what we're going to do is just we got to draw this other hand and then we gotta draw the gun and usually they, they kinda have like this I mean no matter what weapon you get in the game it's always the same model but I'm thinking about giving her a I originally was thinking about an MP5 Navy but that's a little bit too big to be an MP5 Navy maybe we should make it something else maybe we should make it like a it looks like it could be a scar okay, maybe I'll give her a scar Scar gun. There we go. And basically all I'm doing is I'm going on Google. 
Google is our good friend here. We're going to go ahead and pull that up, and that's what I'm going to put in her hands. In fact, let's just go ahead and copy that image. And we'll bring it right in. Whoa, that's a nice high-resolution image. Love it. Love it. But what this allows us to do is we're going to go ahead and flip it around so we can have some good reference here and we barely have to just tweak the perspective on it right no I'm not gonna drop it in and do the little thing and I'm not gonna mess around with those points and do that cheesy thing I'm actually gonna draw it but this is good for the detail yeah that's definitely a scar type of uh, scar sized weapon scar sized weapon Wapon. I'll put it on that side for now yeah, let's just put it over there. Because I still need to finish the details on Fio. So let's go ahead and get to that. Oh, uh, one thing I realized is she does have these uh, wristbands, so let's not forget those. What a travesty that would be. And we're going to have the other hand over here grasping the handle. Uh, okay. Now I actually do need the scar. What an efficient way to work. Okay, so let's go ahead and put the handle here. Okay, and we're always considering the perspective of this gun going upwards, right? So you want to think about the underside of this handle being like that, right? In fact, this might be good to bring back our perspective grid. Come back to us, Perspective Grid. Is this the right one? Yes, it is. And for those of you who are curious about this grid, you can check out yesterday's daily where I described how to use one. How to use one and make one of your own. This really comes in handy for drawing weapons and all that good stuff. So, let's go ahead and reduce the opacity on that. Now let's draw our gun in. This might not look 100% great the first time, but let's just have at it. Have at thee! Okay, so our hand is going to be right here. I already like the way that this looks. And her arm is going to be coming up like this. Her other part of her hand is going to be right there. So this is going to come over, up and over like that. And this part is going to drop down. And we're going to have the edge come over right like that. So let's go ahead and get rid of the rest of this stuff. We don't need it. We do, however, need this hand. And let's make sure that her arm is working right. So. Uh, let's think about it. Her shoulder is over in this area, right? So if her shoulder was there, her elbow would come out to right about there, and then the arm is going to come right up like that. Yeah, pretty simple. And here's the little boot. There's the scar boot. Gotta love it. It goes right up like that. Let's go ahead and make sure that that is looking right. Looks good. Good. Let's bring it up. Okay, so here's the hands. The trigger is going to be coming out just like this. And the clip is going to be right there. Oh, perfect. Just enough room for her hand to be on the other side of it. Awesome. In fact, the trigger will probably end right about there so the clip is actually going to be even further down so it's going to look a little bit more like oh yeah let's make sure we're keeping our perspective keep the perspective use the lines use the farce use the lines Luke okay so let's go ahead and draw this out like that draw that banana clip coming out like that use those perspective lines use them use them. In fact, it's a little bit more turned up, so we're probably going to be a little bit more like 
that. Yeah, that's right. The, the edges will, will follow the same perspective, but these will curve back a little bit more. So we'll get something like that. And let's make sure we can see plenty of the underside of the clip as well, because we are in that perspective, that there perspective. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to line up semi-realistically. And yeah, line up semi-realistically and oh, that second thing I was going to say, whatever that was. Oh yeah, and the other thing is we're drawing in like a cartoony style, so it can always just be kind of exaggerated. Like you'll notice this clip is a little bit kind of like more fat, like if you were to turn it to the side, it would look something more like that. But I kind of like that, you know? You can get all technical with it and make sure everything's all perfect, but you don't necessarily need to. All right, so we've got the clip here. So this comes up like that, and that lines up perfectly with the rail system going on there, which is what she's going to have her hands on. Again, use those perspective lines to go right on up. And that goes right to the very end. See how easy that is? Once you have the perspective grid in there, you can just be like, okay, the line goes there, line goes there, line there, 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 there. And it's really, really easy to lay something in like that. That's why I would highly recommend you guys to go check out yesterday's episode. Check out yesterday's episode. You will be very happy. You will be happy, people. Okay, second rail system. Let's get that going right over here. Again, following these lines. Following these lines. Making that second rail system. That looks really grand. That little uh, bullet, uh, I guess that's the cocking mechanism that you use to load a bullet into the chamber. I'm guessing that's what that thingy is. That's what it looks like. And let's go ahead and stick that side on there, that awesome sight. That's going to come down like that. And I forget what the scar sight looks like. I'll have to check it out in Call of Duty Black Ops. Oh wait, that's actually gonna be more like that. That's what we're gonna. That's what the ellipse will be. The ellipse is following this way. There we go. I think it has like a little dial thing on it or whatever. You guys can actually see what I'm working on, right? Okay, good. Good. And we have been going for about 35 minutes. So, ladies and gentlemen, today, or right now, today, it is time for Question Catapults. Please cast your questions over the castle walls, and I'll answer them, and then we will end day 91 of the K9 Daily. And we got Epic Outro music up. We're good to go. <laughs> what are you guys saying over here? Talking crap? Mm -hmm. Uh, someone's saying the stock looks suddenly bent to the left. I think you might be right. Let's take a look at that. Hmm. Oh, down here. It does look a little bit bent. A tad bit. Yeah, let me see if I can go ahead and fix that really quick. Fixing it. All right, so yeah, let's go ahead and bring this up. That looks good. Yeah, let's go ahead and just bring it all the way back behind her shirt. So I, just, I was trying to avoid this little tangent thing, but I think that's fine. In fact, judging by this thing, the stock should be right about there. Should be right about there, just like that. And then this thing needs to come out a little bit more. There we go. Yeah, that looks good. That looks really good. And then this comes up. 
Um, the other side. Oh, I didn't even consider the other side of her jacket. Didn't even consider that. Let us take a look at that really quick. Um, oh, it looks like most of it is covered by the shirt anyway. I think I'm just going to leave it like that, and I'll just have like the little collar thing come up like this. Just a little hint of something popping up there. Nothing crazy. Nothing crazy. Now let's get back to the gun. I'm actually really happy this gun turned out so well. I wasn't expecting it to turn out this well. But the perspective grid is helping tons. Tons! Okay, we'll see a little bit of this uh, retractable stock thing. And again, not worrying too much about not worrying too much about um, all the little details. I like a little bit of detail, but nothing too crazy. And here's the trigger area. Good, good. All right, and I want to finish this muzzle really quick too. I'm gonna to finish this muzzle because that'll make this thing look really sick. All right, so we're gonna be drawn up like this. We're gonna have a little cylinder like that, and perspective is going like up. So cylinder is gonna be like that. In fact, this sight is gonna be much more cylindrical. Probably gonna, we probably see it more like this at this point and get that little sight in there yeah that looks pretty good alrighty let's draw the barrel and the end of the gun so the barrel is going to come up like this erase all this crap get all of these crap out of there Let's end it right there. Oh, um, Wax and Shrimp is asking a great question. He's saying, hey, are you planning on being at the Salt Lake Comic Con next year? And I can say, absolutely. Absolutely, I will be doing my best job to be noting the first day. In fact, I was thinking about calling the producer, Dan Farr, and just saying, hey, man, thank you very much for the opportunity. I'd really love to either reserve a spot for next year now or just let me know when you guys are going to be putting those on sale because I do want to go to that convention again it was amazing and I also want to go to cons other cons all around the world travel the world Wesker Khan. like Wesker Khan. alright <laughs> I will be there with money for you also a good way to get me to go yes alright um, let's see Alright guys, so it looks like I uh, just got a couple more minutes here. We're going to finish off this barrel, and then we're going to call it good. Making sure this whole thing is looking nice. Love it. But yes, thank you to everyone who I did see this year at the Salt Lake Comic Con. Thank you for coming out and saying hi telling me I have a beautiful garden of a comic and forcing me to get up and hug you and cry with you. That was an amazing time. As well as, yeah, I, just, I appreciated the support and I could not believe how many people were crammed into that little space. That was really, really awesome. Quite a treat. This little uh, instrumentation crap on there, whatever that is. And there you go! All right, let's take away the grid. The moment of truth. The moment of truth. Take away the grid and see if it still looks good. Hey, look at that. Ha ha. The gun looks great. The gun looks great. Wow, it actually looks better than I thought it was going to. That's really sweet. Except that sight looks off to me now. I think it was better the other way. Dang it. Dang it. Did I save it the other way? No, I didn't. All right, let me just fix that really quick. Really quick, let me fix that. It was more like that the other time. Oh, now it looks even worse. Okay, whatever. I'm gonna I'm gonna deal with that later. 
<laughs> All right. People are saying they like the boots. Yes, I love the boots. Normally, Theo has like kind of smaller boots, but because I've been drawing Emma all the time, I decided to go ahead and exaggerate them up to the knees there. So, I don't know. They're pretty much the same. I just ditched the big socks. But other than that, it's pretty good. All right, you people. So, we're going to go ahead and end day 91 of the Can Kale Daily Show. Thank you once again, everyone, for joining me live on Twitch. For those of you on YouTube, thumbs up if you like it. Thumbs down if you don't. My name is Keenan Lafferty. I'll see you guys tomorrow for Thoughtful Thursday. Until then, you guys take care. See you.